Hey everyone, Jay Whitner here with Space Headlines. We do a quick recap of what's going on in the space universe every week. And today we're going to be talking about the first week of December 2018. Our first item is a Russian item. The Soyuz launched successfully, bound for the International Space Station, carrying a crew of three folks. And basically this was a, a Russian guy, an American guy, and a Canadian guy. What makes this uh, interesting, this particular flight, is the previous flight was unsuccessful and had to be aborted. And on that flight, none of the passengers were hurt on the last flight, so that was great. Russia was able to identify the fault quickly and address it and fix it. And as I mentioned earlier, this flight went off well. So congratulations to Russia for prompt resolution of this problem. SpaceX makes history again. This is a significant step. The image that you see here is a Falcon 9. And you see the bottom part of the Falcon 9 is darkened and blackened because it's flown a couple times before. So this was the third flight of this booster, which had never happened previously. So in the past, the, the first stage had flown either once or twice. So this time it flew three times, which was a, a nice milestone for SpaceX. The, the mission was fine. The first stage landed successfully on a drone ship out of the Pacific. So it could fly more times, and this is important for SpaceX's long-term goals in terms of reusability and cost reduction with their, their ultimate goal of having a first stage be used up to 100 times, theoretically. So this is a, a huge step forward for SpaceX and our hearty congratulations to them on achieving this major milestone for the company and for spaceflight. OSIRIS-REx is our next story. The, this NASA probe was launched roughly two years ago, bound for the Bennu asteroid. So it has now arrived at the asteroid, and its goal is to do a sample return and bring back material from the asteroid to Earth. If all the timelines hold, the sample would come back to Earth in 2023. This is a, a large asteroid. It's about 1,500 feet in diameter, so it's a significant size. And this will be the first time that a U.S. probe has ever done such a thing. It was done once before by a Japanese mission. So this is, is a big step forward, and OSIRIS-REx right now is at the bit of asteroid. Space News honored SpaceX and the SpaceX Falcon Heavy by naming it the Breakthrough of the Year for 2018. So this is the, the image here, of course, is the Falcon Heavy. This is currently the most powerful rocket uh, on planet Earth, and it can carry uh, approximately double the payload to space of any other rocket that exists. <clears throat> I was there at the, at the Cape for the, uh, for the first flight of Falcon Heavy. It was very exciting watching the, uh, the side boosters fly back in formation and land at the Cape. That was really cool. And they have uh, several flights booked on the manifest for Falcon Heavy uh, moving forward. And there's a flight in early 2019, I think it's in January. I should have looked that up for the broadcast. Um, so this is, is a huge milestone and is the scaled to be able to do some interesting work in terms of lunar missions, lunar development. Uh, as I understand it, the Falcon Heavy, uh, when paired with appropriate gear in one launch can land about 8.5 tons on the lunar surface. So while it's uh, not brawny enough to do uh, large-scale Mars missions, it definitely can do some very exciting stuff on the moon. We had another Falcon 9 launch, and this launch uh, carried a, a lot of payload up toward the space station, roughly 6,000 pounds of gear. And what was interesting about this one is, although the payload was successfully placed in the proper orbit to get up to the space station, the booster did not land in Florida as it was intended to do. So what happened? Well, when it was coming back, uh, when, the, when the first stage was coming back from the mission, the initial landing point for safety purposes is out at sea a little bit in the Atlantic. So 
as this process is going on, the computers aboard check all the systems on the rocket. And if every system is working perfectly, then it redirects the launch point to land on a launch pad, uh, on the designated launch pad, which in this case was the, uh, was the launch pad on Florida itself. But it did not pass all the safety inspections because there was a hydraulic problem with the grid fins. So it never redirected to come to Florida, so it, so it landed effectively on the water in a safe place and a safe remove from people and, and all the, uh, the equipment in the Kennedy Space Center, Cape Canaveral area. So this is, is a great step forward in terms of safety. And it, it sort of illustrates the incredible progress that SpaceX has made. Not too long ago, people said it was impossible to, to bring back a first stage. Until this mission, they had done it 27 times successfully in a row, landing the first stage. And in the wake of this issue, the same day this happened, SpaceX had already identified what the problem was and proposed a, a logical fix for the problem, which is to make redundancy for this hydraulic unit for the grid fin. And the bottom line is that they have lots of redundancy for most of the major parts in terms of getting a, a payload up into space. But once the payload is already on its way, returning the first stage is desirable, but not mandatory. So there's less redundancy in terms of the gear needed to return the first stage once the payload is already on its way. 46 years has passed since our last mission launched down for the moon. Uh, this was the Apollo 17 mission, which made lots of uh, records, of course, in, in that mission. It was the, the longest duration on the moon. It had the first geologist that, uh, that went to the moon, Harrison Schmidt. And it all happened 46 years ago, Apollo 17. So, but we are coming up on another anniversary. The Apollo 11 anniversary is, is coming up pretty soon. Next year in July will be the anniversary. For the first time, people stepped forth and, and, and walked on another planetary body. So what I would like to see is, I'd like to see the, the SpaceX BFR, the upper part, that's what they call the Starship. They're planning hop tests for 2019. I'd really like to see at least one of those hop tests happen uh, by or around this, this anniversary. I think it'd be a great way to honor the crew of Apollo 11, the great achievement that they did. So we'll see if, uh, if Mr. Musk can do that as a gift for everyone. That's it for Space Headlines covering the first week of December 2018. We'll see you in, in a week or so and we'll talk about the second week of December 2018. Thanks for being with us.